Hi there and welcome to this two minute tips video and today we're going to be focusing on auto bracketing and in particular we're going to focus on exposure and flash bracketing. So in a previous video I've talked about some of the uses of auto bracketing where the camera takes a series of images at different settings and today we're going to focus on auto bracketing in relation to exposure and flash bracketing. I'll warn you now, this is going to be a bit longer than two minutes because it is quite an involved topic. The manual takes you so far on this, but actually you have to think about it in a wider set of settings and the situation you are shooting in. The reason I've broken it down into a couple of videos is exposure and flash bracketing adjusts the camera in a similar way and works in a similar way with similar settings. In a separate video we'll look at some of the other options you've got in auto bracketing. So if we go back to the days of film when we perhaps had a more rudimentary metering in your camera or perhaps it was off-camera metering that you used then auto bracketing was great to help you get the optimum exposure in situations where perhaps the metering wasn't as perfect as we're perhaps used to today. Luckily the similar capabilities of auto bracketing have been brought forward into modern DSLRs and mirrorless cameras and it can be useful in a couple of different scenarios. Firstly it's the same as the days of film. We're perhaps shooting in a complex lighting situation where we've got a particularly bright element within the um, image we're taking and whilst metering is good and the dynamic range of our modern sensors is really good actually it doesn't quite get the metering spot on. What we're talking about here is not replacing the metering but helping us enhance getting that optimum exposure. The second use is around HDR photography or high dynamic range photography where you can shoot a series of images at different exposures and then blend them together in post-production. And this can be a great way of capturing some really interesting images in some challenging scenarios. So let's start by looking at what can be achieved and in this video we're going to look at exposure and flash and in another video we'll look at some of the other options that are out there. And you can find the um, auto bracketing in the menu system. If you go into the menu system, you go to the photo shooting menu, you scroll down to the fourth page or up to the fourth page, it's quicker going the other way, and third down on the fourth page you'll find auto bracketing. If you go into here, the top image is called auto bracketing set and this is where you choose the type of bracketing you want, a what you want to auto bracket for. You'll see there are five options, we're going to focus on the first three today because they're uh, pretty similar, you've got auto exposure and flash, auto exposure or flash on its own and then you've got white balance and ADL and we'll cover those in a separate video. So I usually have mine set to auto exposure because I don't tend to use a flash and within auto exposure it's the same with AEM flash and flash you've got two more options you've got the number of shots which is how many shots you want to take and you've got the increment which is the increment between the shots in terms of EV that you want the camera to um, adjust to. Okay let's start by looking at the number of shots and I'll put up the table that's in the manual um, which shows the settings if you've got the increment set to one third of a stop or 0.3 EV and what you'll see is you'll start at 0F and that is auto bracketing off. If you scroll to the right you'll get 3F, 5F, 7F and 9F the number den denotes the number of shots that you want the camera to bracket with and in these settings the camera will have the metered um, exposure set as the center point and with three shots it will shoot one shot um, lower and one shot higher, 5F it will shot, shoot two shots lower and two shots higher etc. If you scroll to the left of 0F you will get some settings of plus 3F, minus 3F, plus 2F and minus 2F and in this, these settings the number again denotes the number of shots you want the camera to take, the plus or minus denotes whether you want the camera to start at the metered um, shot and 
plus go higher EV and minus go lower EV. So you can choose how the camera brackets around that metered exposure shot. Now the table in the manual shows the um, number of shots if you have the um, increment set to a third of a stop. It should be noted though, if you go to um, two stops or higher as the increment, then the maximum number of shots you can shoot is five. So you won't see the 7F and 9F options in the settings. So let's think about these settings in a real world context. You're perhaps shooting a sunset, you're shooting into a sun, the sun's going down, it's quite bright. You've got some foreground interest you want to capture and that's perhaps in the shadows. And therefore what you might want to think about is if you're using matrix metering, choosing auto bracketing um, with a minus three F setting. So the first shot will be uh, metered for the overall image and will hopefully capture some of the detail in the foreground but the sun will be perhaps burnt out, the highlights will be burnt out. The second and third shots will adjust to expose better for the highlights, you'll get more definition in the sun going down. You'll obviously want to shoot the shots very quickly um, so that the sun doesn't move too far in the, in the sky and then what you can do is you can perhaps merge them together either using HDR or perhaps um, in Photoshop or Lightroom, blend those images together to get the different parts of the image from the different um, shots where they've been better exposed. So auto bracketing does take some planning and thinking about and it's not just the auto bracketing settings. In the context of auto exposure and flash bracketing, we've talked about how the camera is adjusting the EV to get a different exposure in the different images. How the camera does this depends on the mode you have set. So for example, if you've got your camera set in P mode, then it will adjust the shutter speed and aperture to get the right exposures. If you've got it set to shutter priority, it will obviously adjust the aperture to get the right exposures. And if you've got aperture mode, it will adjust the shutter speed to get the right exposure. Manual mode follows aperture mode and it does um, use shutter speed to adjust the exposure. However, it will also vary ISO first and then shutter speed if you've got auto ISO turned on. Finally, you've got to think about shutter release and I usually have it set to continuous and high because I don't want any movement between the different shots that I'm taking in auto bracketing. This is particularly important if you're doing HDR where you're going to be using post-production um, software to blend those images together and therefore using a tripod and shutter release is often really important. So you've set up your camera, you're ready to go You've got it set in continuous. If you hold down the shutter release, the camera will take the number of shots you've asked it to. So if you had a three shot, it will take three shots, then it will pause. If you release the shutter after two shots, the next shot you take will be the third in that burst of shots. So if you pause out of sequence and you think you're gonna be taking the next three shots, it can get quite confusing um, if you get out of sequence. It's best to just take the number of shots you need to get you to the end of that burst and start again. Equally, there's a really useful bit of functionality both on the um, back LCD, down the right hand side, you'll see a graduated exposure um, uh, range with zero at the middle, plus at the top and minus at the bottom. And in the EVF, you see it along the bottom. And when you're doing auto bracketing, the camera will show you the different shots as tick marks on that range. Each time you take a shot, one will disappear. So you can keep track of how many shots you've taken and which shots it's gonna take next. Um, so really great little piece of functionality there to help you get it right. Once you've finished auto bracketing, you go into the menu again and you set the number of shots back to zero to turn it off and go back into normal mode. Sometimes I've forgotten to do that and you wonder why you're getting some spurious results because the camera continues to auto bracket. Now I've talked about setting auto bracketing up through the menu system. With the Z series cameras you can 
also an I, this is where I set it up. I put it in my I button menu so you can go in there and you can quickly turn it on and adjust the settings. Equally, you can um, set it to one of the other custom buttons. So there's lots of ways, if you're finding you're using auto bracketing a lot, you can set the camera up so you can get to it really simply. So let us know in the comments below, how do you use auto bracketing? What situations do you find it useful in? It'd be great to understand what you're using it for. As always, if you've enjoyed this video, it is a bit longer than the usual two minutes, but hopefully you found it useful. Do hit subscribe, hit the notification bell, and you'll be notified of future videos. And I very much look forward to seeing you in a future video.